Hey everybody and welcome back to the Tarvis and we are full of things to talk about tonight but it's getting late so I'll keep it kind of short. Uh, first thing, I finally had that uh, telephone interview with Nick Argento over at Glencoe and we got the last little few things on the script straightened out so uh, hopefully I'll do the audio tomorrow and maybe get it out tomorrow night but Hope, uh, I'm sure I can have it out by Friday if nothing unforeseen crops up. And uh, that's probably the last uh, video that I can commit to before I go back to training, whenever that is, because I don't want to make more commitments and then the phone rings and I can't do them. Although I am working on uh, a couple of others, so maybe I'll get them out. So finish the bonanza today. Looks good. Uh, not perfect, uh, to be sure, but uh, it, it looks fine. I think it's going to go on the shelf. Um, added a little bit of rigging to the uh, Barbary pirate ship and only knocked off two oars doing it, but don't be glued back on. I, I didn't fully rig it because all I have is the box art and I don't think I could get those tiny little rat lines done. But but I just it looked a little silly with a bowsprit with nothing on it, so I just put a, a main and aft stay on it and, and a couple of uh, corner uh, sheets for the uh, corners of the sails. Um, or, excuse me. Uh, yards. Uh, so that's, well, they should have triangular. They may be classified as sails. I know yards are square. Anyway, I'll let one of you sailing ship experts, uh, maybe Bruce, maybe you can straighten me out on that. And uh, finished the first mobile gas truck and working on the second one and got the windshield in it, uh, which I handcrafted uh, real hard, cutting a little square piece of pl clear plastic and glued it in there. And uh, Oh, I spent most of the day on the computer getting uh, stuff done for the video, so I didn't get a whole lot of model time in tonight. But uh, anyway, it's all coming together. Knock out the army trucks and uh, figure out what I want to do for the figurines. And uh, I'll be on my way to uh, getting the Exodus uh, diorama made. I was thinking about adding the Bonanza to it, you know, make it look like maybe they're passing a strip or maybe the military commandeered a civilian airplane because, you know, it's like, oh, mass exit, ooh, you know, big, you know, heavy, important, you know, Martian invasion or atomic blast, you know, war, you know, kind of mass population exits, make it all, uh, you know, heavy duty. But then I realized that that's a V-35A Bonanza, which came out around 69 and, and this, this, uh, diorama and really trying to do it in the vein of the 1950s uh, movies and so I'll probably take some pictures with it and without it you know it'd be a little anachronistic but hey it's all in good fun right um, so that uh, pretty much is all I got done today a lot of work uh, the truck yep 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 yeah I think that's it so uh, wow <laughs> wasn't that much after all <laughs> uh, I'll say it'd be quick so, uh, guys, uh, take care. Have a wonderful evening. And, uh, oh, I knew there was something I wanted to mention. Some of you had asked about uh, making the molds, uh, it, how the molds cooled down. And because they're so big, they're like 800, 1200 pound blocks of steel. I thought, uh, I think I'd read a couple of places that some of them were looking cool, but some of them aren't. I wasn't sure. And I'd said that uh, I think they just worked as a heat sink. But the more I thought about it, the less that made sense, and, and, and Nick straightened me out about that. The kit model injection mold presses are liquid cooled. Uh, the, the styrene goes in, you know, liquid, super hot, and goes into all the, the, the crevices and everything. And they close the valve, and then cold water goes through the, the piping, the, the internal cooling system. Uh, I assume it's water, the coolant goes through and brings the temperature down, and then it solidifies. Now, on that point, and I'll be talking a little about this in the Glencoe video because he was telling me a lot about this. The rate at which you cool, how you cool the plastic has a big impact on how good the model is going to be. Now, that there's a lot of things involved in how clean the molds are and uh, how well maintained they are and what kind of pressure it goes in under. Because where you have parts that are very thin like wingtips and stuff and you know trailing edges of wings that get very thin, You've really got to get a lot of pressure in there to fill those things out completely. But uh, machines are rated by the pressure, 300, 350, 400 pounds of pressure. The more pressure, the bigger the machine, the more pressure it can get, the better job it can do. But when you do that, you then have to cool it, but you have to cool it at a correct rate. Because if you cool too fast, 
you can get shrinkage. And if you cool too slow, well, it's taking you forever to crank models out. And uh, he said a really skilled operator can probably get two pressings a minute out, but normally it's about 40, 45 seconds to get one done. But uh, so yeah, they are liquid cooled and the rate, the, the proper cooling rate, getting it, you have to set these molds up and you get all that set up for every specific mold because every mold has to be cooled at a different rate. And getting all of it, and he said easily, it can take three, four hours to get to get a mold set up, do the test shots, you know, get the cooling set up. It, it's quite a process. It's not a terribly simple thing to do. And it's as much art as it is science. And so uh, I hope that answered the question you were asking about that. And, you can, and we can thank Nick over there. Uh, we talked about a bunch of cool stuff, which is going to go into the video. And, uh, uh, you know, big plans over there at Glencoe. So uh, that's... Uh, I'm glad that they're still going strong and, and clearly he's doing this uh, I mean of course it's a business that's there to make money but clearly he loves what he's doing and, and just like the guys at Atlantis and with these companies like this it really shows and uh, now that I went and watched uh, the YouTube channel Defunct Land's uh, episode on Tomorrowland of course now I want to have all of the Glencoe former uh, Disney stuff of the Von Braun stuff you know the multi-stage rocket and the retriever rocket and 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 the wheel and the space station I, I want all that stuff now i want the mars liner and uh so anyway uh guys once again thanks for watching and maybe we'll see you for coffee in the morning you guys have a wonderful evening keep on modeling Well, last second thing, a little bit of a catastrophe as I'm walking out the door. I had gloss coated the Bonanza, only these cans, they don't have the name on the can. It's on this little piece of paper that you tear off. And I had miscapped one and I wound up covering with dull coat. So now I'm going to have to see if gloss coat can save it. Wonderful. There's a lesson in, first off, that's a poor weight. Most of my cans I have actually written on them what they are because of that. This one had a clear coat, uh, gloss coat lid on it, but apparently I'd capped it on the wrong one. There you go, but I can save it. Still, it's just one of those frustrations. Ain't that something?